Project Sweetbox book number 40, Eve of the Emperor Penguin, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter 8, A Good Story. The snow mobiles and the helicopter both broke on slope. Scientists and journalists, the doctor was nursing a pink. Oh no, and it's a grab duck. What oh, about penguin? We're not supposed to have a penguin. They'll take her away. Jack was unprotectively over his back. I'll hide her, he said. We've got to get her to Merlin. Jack had a shot. She turned around. Nancy had caught sight of them. She was waving her arms and running towards them. Hey, you two! Nancy called. She dashed across the snow and threw her arms around Annie and then Jack. Jack called his friends. Hope you penny warm to scratch. Peep! Jack pulled away from Nancy, pretending to cough. He was coughing and in his throat of peep. The chapter just got here. And then soon, Pete told me he was delayed by a snow squall. I freaked out. Where have you been? Are you okay? Don't worry, we're fine, said Annie. Perfect, Mr. Jack. We don't feel a bit so good in so We're just getting some fresh air. We're ready to go now. That's our walking towards the chopper. Annie grabbed Nancy's arm and walk with her. Did you have fun on the mountain? And I was trying to keep Nancy's attention off Jack. What happened? What did you see? It's a lot of things. I was worried about you guys the whole time, said Nancy. Your parents must be friends of back at the station. They had their own expectations today, said Annie. They studied penguins. Pete, what was that? asked Nancy. Jack did his weird cough again. Are you sure you're okay, Jack? Nancy called after him. I'm perfect, he said. As the sheriff then pressed the others, they were greeted with terrors. Nancy must have told anyone that were just little kids, Jack saw. So better safe, young man, said Alan the Bloodious. He slept back on the back. Penny Pete and Jack coughed. Sorry I couldn't make it up to the top, said Kim the photographer. That's okay, said Annie. We still got a good story. Did you now? said Lucy the space scientist. Yes, a really good story, said Annie. Excellent, but you mustn't tell a soul, said Tony the journalist, or one of us will steal it. Tony laughed, and the others laughed with him. Okay, we'll keep it a secret, and he smiled. Pete opened the door from the chopper. Brave little kids first, said Nancy. Oh, brother, said Jack. Nancy assured Jack and Annie towards the helicopter. They scrambled up the steps, climbed aboard, and sat down. As the others climbed in and got settled, Jack loosened his seatbelt so he could buckle up with a little crushing penny. Peep, Jack called, but to his relief, Pete started to enter. The water blades began to spin. Headphones, yelled Nancy. Everyone pulled out their headphones. Nancy gave Jack and Annie book smell and stumped up sign and his helicopter lift off the mountain slope. I love Lake Spring, even it's Antarctica, said Nancy to the group. Jack looked out to the window. The evening sky's lavender was streaks of pink. This always reminds me that we're in a different world than the world back home, said Nancy. Jack and I smiled at each other. If I'm the others, see how many different worlds there really were. The chopper swept up through the soft light of the cold sky. It was the slope of the burning mountain, past the orange red lakes of boiling lava, over the wet fields of ice and snow, until finally it landed at the heliport, where the red bus was waiting. The chopper blades stopped spinning. Pete gave the signal. The jacket and it followed Nancy and the others out of the helicopter. Jack hooked Penny in his place, and his pocket and seat boarded the red bus. He sat with Annie near the back. Nancy took the driver's seat and started the engine. As the bus rolled along, Jack peeked into his pocket. Penny looked up at him. She blinked a few times as if she was a little worried. Jack patted her gently until she closed her eyes and fell asleep. Jack kept patting the front of his pocket to comfort Penny. 
He looked out at the window and patted the baby penguin the whole ride. As Penny snuggled close to Jack, none of his warps of the day mattered anymore. His fear of falling to lavalier, his dread of altitude sickness, his embarrassment at being caught by Nancy, all the cares and confusion of the day were wiped away by his feelings for the orphan penguin. When the red bus started station, Jack and Annie followed Edwin down to ask the cloud out. As the others started talking in a group, Jack and Annie started walking away. We're leaving now. Bye, Nancy, said Annie. Bye, everyone. Thanks for everything, called Jack. Oh, no, you don't, said Nancy. She grabbed them by the sleeves of their parkas. I'm not letting you two out of my sight again. Not until I hand deliver you to your parents. But our parents are still on the penguin expectation, said Annie. Now take you where you're staying, said Nancy. Come on. Pushing the park up, she started walking down towards the building. You almost staying in the wildlife quarters, right? Oh, yes, said Jack. Nancy led Jack and Annie to a building at the edge of the compound. Well, here you are. Home safe and sound. Thanks, said Annie. Bye. Jack was just a prey to get away with me. Wait, it's an ass. Oh no, what now? Said so Jack. I'm still worried about you guys. Said Nancy. Are your parents ready here, you study penguins? I want you to tell me the true story now. And you have a son. Okay. The true story is that Jack and I came alone to a tartar in a magic tree house. And he is that. Sam kept talking. It belongs to Morgan the Fifth Camera. Morgan wants us to find the four secret happiness for Merlin the Magician. See, he's very sad. It says we in the Tarsica were headed for Camera to cheer him up. Nancy just did it, and Jack closed his breast and free Nancy finally have a heart attack. But Nancy burst out laughing and shook her head. Where did that come from? He said. You guys are so cute. How do you make up this stuff? Seriously, no. Tell me the truth. Well, started that. Oh, look, said Annie. Mom, Dad. What? Said Jack. They are, said Annie. She pointed to a couple bound up in parkas, goggles, and ski masks. They were walking toward a building. Oh, right, said Jack. Mom, Dad. The couple kept walking and disappeared behind the building. They didn't hear us, said Annie. We better go. They'll wonder where we are. Bye, Nancy. Thanks for everything. Nancy, come with us for the coffee. Tony yelled, standing by the bus. You should go, Nancy. Said Annie. We'll be fine. Okay, said Nancy, Sammy. Bye, guys. Run and catch up with your folks. Peep. Jack caught his funny cough. And take care of that cough of yours, Jack, said Nancy. Don't worry, I will, said Jack. Then Jack and Anne took off. They ran behind the building to stop and peek back around the corner. They watched Nancy walk off with Tony and the others. Let's go, said Jack. He and he hurried away from the buildings at McMurdo Station. Jack put his arms around Penny as they crossed the icy slope and ran to the cliff near the treehouse. It was still there, tucked under the overhand. Anne climbed in through a window. Jack followed her. Careful not to let Penny slip out of his parka. Annie pulled Morgan's run out of her pocket and read the last part. The speed to camp note by close of day. Let's grief to come rolling forever away. Let's go, said Jack. Speed to camp note. Annie pointed to a word camp note and said, loudly and clearly, I wish we could go there. A blast of light, a roar of wind. A rumble of thunder, and of course, there were.